This morning, I had the welcome opportunity to sit down with Cardinal Egan at his residence on the east side of Manhattan. His eminence is a highly regarded expert of the church in America, and of course, the now retired Archbishop of the Archdiocese of New York. The Cardinal shared with me his excitement and his high hopes for the Bishop elect Scharfenberger. I'm uh, simply delighted with the choice. This is a key position because this is our state's capital, and therefore, the Senate and the Assembly are there with the governor and with the major institutions of the great state of New York. And it's very important to have a competent and dedicated and uh, very intelligent bishop, and that is certainly what we have in Edward Scharfenberger. The bishop-elect is both a canon and civil lawyer. Many Catholics hope he will be able to instill change in the state's capital. Last session, two major proposals were rejected the DREAM Act, and the Education Investment Incentive Bill. We have to face the fact that uh, decisions are made in Albany really on the basis of financial considerations for the elected officials. If you have big institutions who feel threatened and give immense amount of money to political figures, those political figures are not going to acquiesce. They're not going to give up uh, volunteers and millions of dollars of gifts and so forth and support, even to sustain two acts as beautiful as those two. It's in the interest of the state of New York that more and more children go to private schools because they don't have to pay for the public schools. But if you're a public school teacher's union leader, you don't care about that. The issue isn't education. The issue is the more children you have, the more income you have. And if you don't have any competition, you can't be compared to anything. And therefore, Mr. Legislator, please understand, you have to go our way. And if you don't, and if you don't, you can fill in the lines. Cardinal Egan believes the bishop must start small and in the most important place, the cornerstone of each parish. The first thing and the second thing and the most important thing for any bishop to work on is the strength of his parishes. Focus on the parish. See to it that the parish priest, the religious working with him, the staff in the parish and so forth are doing a good job, understand they have support, uh, are applauded when they have success and helped when they're having problems. The church's future depends not on pieces of legislation that are going to be impeded by unions or whatever. The church's future depends upon strong parishes. The Cardinal made one more request that the new bishop let him be of service. I just want to be sure that uh, the good Bishop of Albany knows that uh, I uh, am available to help him in any way I might. I wrote a letter to him to explain my inability to go to his consecration, but I added that whenever I could be of help I want him simply to pick up the telephone and I'll be there at the ready. Also, I want to be sure that he knows that he is now entering a new and wonderful stage of his life and the old retired Archbishop of New York will be praying for him regularly and praying as well for the great people of Albany. For Currents, I'm Michelle Powers.